Haji as appropriator of the Islamic Revolution. And a viewer of Western TV News asked Haji, speak to us of pro-Islamic Republic demonstrators burning the American flags and shouting, death to America! And Haji replied, had Plato been successful at banishing poets from the ideal republic, the government itself would have assumed the position. See the histories of all nations, from Austria, Austria to Zimbabwe. So do most revolutions at some level counter systems of power by appropriating the matrix. In Iran, for example, students of the American hostage taking in 1979 have become professors of how things went wrong. But don't you exaggerate, asked the viewer of Western TV News, how to explain those who burn the stars and stripes. It's not that those people don't mean what they say, but they've been bussed in from rural areas to the center of Tehran and paid cash for their rallying cries. Extending the example to the power of poetry, a genre having long ago crossed the threshold into indifference, I, as Haji, have strategically paid could just as well be asked to burn his books, capturing the evil spirit of this versifier. Yeah! Two. <laughs> yeah. At the poetry reading, yeah. bored out of his gourd with his own poetry, Haji took off his shoes to step more literally across the stage. First left, first left to right, then right to left. A bread and butter strut of his American and Persian traditions. At last, he'd broken through the public's cliché perception, shattered the, elus the elusive wall between audience and performer. Unlike few traditional poets before him, schooled in form, he could look at his readers like they were his bitches, spitting out some hard words that sounded less like verse and more like punk rock in its exception. Before there were doctoral dissertations written on punk rock, or a museum in Cleveland dedicated to rock and roll. We're talking about the spirit of true rock and roll here. Having stood up in the last collection to the ruthless motherfuckers ruling Iran gave him a little clout. So what if the proverbial suit-wearing snoot gives guffaws on his way out the door? There's plenty more where he comes from. As if to make his point, Haji polled the crowd, asking who else could give a shit about standards in the 21st century? Seriously, who else gives a shit about standards in the 21st century? Support word enough to Trump, an old school critic who remains in the room, consider that more writers remain in Iranian prisons than anywhere else in the world. Let this empty chair. Let this chair empty represent the empty chair always set aside at, by Penn, the worldwide organization supporting oppressed writers. Student, uh, I'll announce the names of some oppressed writers. Prisoner 0001 from China. Prisoner 002 from Thailand. Prisoner 003 from Russia. Prisoner 043 through 2000 from the Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Proclaiming himself a metaphorical martyr, Haji jumps on the chair, saying, Captain, my captain, not so much like you were Whitman, or even the character played by Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society. Yeah. Or, more like he's Robin Williams pretending to play the character in Dead Poets Society. A Brechtian show trial in which he foregrounds the limits of his performance. And the same goes for the shift in voice as he channels Liam Neeson, channeling the Irish activist Michael Collins as the police approach him to the stage. Oh, here come our friend, the censorship police, working on behalf of spooky academic critics who have teamed up with the Islamic Republic of Iran. The distortion of repressive regimes of the 20th century. They can jail us. They can shoot us. They can conscript us. They can use our heads as cannonballs to shoot across the Atlantic and harm America. Persian Empire. Yeah. And that weapon is our 
If they manage against my will to shut me up, who will take my place? I want to know. I can't hear you. If they come to take me up, who will take my place? Do you hear? 